you know, I got out here a couple weeks ago and just missed it by three or four days and was getting videos and, and calls from the family. And I couldn't believe, you know, seeing how much snow and the temperature drop, you know, being from Texas, that's uh, it's not normal. You know, they say the weather's crazy. It could be hot and cold um, just by a blink of an eye. But, yeah, my family's doing good. There were some power outages um, around their neighborhoods. Um, but for the most part, um, no water. You know, they, they had water. Um, but it's crazy. It's like you get power for an hour, power's turned off for two hours. So it's just... You know, it's just kind of one of those things. But um, when I saw the videos of the car, like the car pile up in, in Dallas and also in Austin, it's, uh, you know, prayers going out to all those families. Yeah, I'm glad everybody's okay with your family. Hey, um, how's it been for you this offseason in terms of watching this team develop, see the moves that AJ's been making, and, and how pumped are you about getting this season going? Man, it's, uh, it's been awesome. You know, it's, uh, it's crazy to see how far we've come. Um, you know, I've been, I remember being traded over in 2016 and, and seeing this organization grow and being a part of such a, a special team. It's, uh, it's been an honor and it's been a privilege and we're, we're super excited. Um, but the offseason went well, man. I, I uh, was able to, you know, clear the head after a, a learning year for me um, in 2020. A lot of ups, a lot of downs, um, you know, but I'm, I'm excited to get back out there and, and attack the zone. It was such a strange situation last year with the quick startup, the short season, um, your ankle. I mean, in looking back on it, there's so many different things that can be viewed. But what were your takeaways, both maybe with positive things that may have been overshadowed and also some things that you may have wanted to go differently? Yeah, you know, me being such a competitor and and I knew with this team, you know, what we wanted to do um, from the start of last season. Uh, we came up a little short from our, our personal goals of, of winning the World Series, but there was a lot of a lot of learning curves for me, you know. It, it was, uh, you know, as as weird as it sounds, you know, it, the results were never there. I was never pleased with with the results and and my personal goals um, when it comes to the game of baseball. But I was able to learn a lot, you know. I was I was able to uh, learn how to face adversity, um, you know. Basically, dug myself in some holes and I had to get out of them. And I think. You know, this game is, is very challenging and very hard. You have to be able to learn those things quickly or, you know, it's just going to relay over to the next season. So I think it was, it was good for, for me personally to, to go home and see my family and clear my head and, and get back into, uh, you know, setting my goals high for the 2021 season. When you say the results were never there, when, when you look back on it, was it because – the league knew you a little bit better. You didn't execute the way you wanted to. Pitch sequencing. What What did you What do you think it was all about? For me, I think it was uh, very challenging. Um, you know, like you said earlier, not having you know a set time. Um, you know, when the season was going to start, there was just a lot of a lot of challenges that you know us as players had to deal with for the first time, as well as everybody, um, including our coaching staff. It was it was just you know kind of a, a strange year. Um, you know, but that's no excuse. I think overall, um, like the biggest, the biggest thing that I would say is it was mentally for me and I'm a, I'm a big believer in, um, uh, you know, we've, we've thrown a thousand innings through our baseball career. We've done it a thousand times. Stepping foot on the rubber is, is just another day. So I think it has a lot to do with how you prepare and how you, how you can uh, eliminate all the noise out there in the world. Um, so for me, I, I felt like there was a couple times, a couple starts where I, I wasn't myself. You know, I was overthinking, um, you know, giving too much credit to the, to the team we were facing or the hitter I was facing instead of just being myself and going out there and competing. I know that Jason, everyone has really been raving about the work that you put in this offseason back home, and they, they've seen that carry over here into spring training so far. What specifically have you been working on, if you can share, you know, on the mechanics-wise or what you're working on mound-wise? I can tell you one thing, I'm, I'm hungry. Um, you know, I'm excited to get back out there. Uh, we have such a special group and, uh, you know, having, having you and having Snell and Musgrove and those guys, Lamette, uh, you know, to look up to and to learn from those guys, it's, I'm really excited. But, you know, overall, um, a couple things I worked on was just getting my fastball back. Uh, never been like a big analytical guy or, or breaking down that stuff, but I know that 
you know, the way the game has developed. Um, you know, I took a step back and, and started learning a couple things about, you know, the rap soto and the track man side of things. So, you know, I can glance at that during the season and make sure that, you know, we're still where we want to be. Um, you know, but I think, like I said, it's just it was clear in my head, I think, was was a big part and it's going to be a big part of the success for, for this upcoming season is, is just being able to, uh, to clear the head, but also, you know, get back to being myself mentally. Um, fastball, like I said, was a, I think was a big uh, problem for me last season. You know, I had more horizontal break than I've ever had. Um, so being able to, to take a step back and, and throw in a couple more bullpens this off season than I have in the previous years uh, to really dial that in and get ready for spring. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Go to Annie. Hey, Chris. Good to see you. Good uh, to see you. Jace Tingler, Jace Tingler said that they were pretty involved this offseason um, with all the players, but also especially with you. Was it more so? Were they more so involved this year, this offseason, than past years? And he said he came out, he, he saw some of your workouts and everything. Um, was that different than past years? And was it beneficial in, in some ways, that communication? Yeah, I think it's, it's always... Uh... You know, pretty cool to see, um, you know, our coaching staff as well as our front office guys to come out and and to, uh, you know, build a relationship and bond. Uh, it makes it easy, too, that, you know, when you go to uh, Texas, you can knock out and see four or five players. Uh, we had Nick Ramirez, Mason Thompson, um, when we signed uh, Darvish, myself. Um, you know, so it was kind of cool to for them to just go up to Dallas, see Darvish, and then come up to Austin and, and you know, take us to lunch and, and sit down and and just talk goals, talk life. Um, I think it's important, you know, as players to uh, be comfortable around your coaching staff and, and trust one another. And, and uh, you know, we, we're – Ting is, you know, this is his second year, you know, so he wants to get to know us as players and we want to get to know him as, as a manager as well on and off the field. So I think it's – for me personally, I love it. I think it's, it's pretty cool to have those bonding moments. And then, you know, for going forward, what do you think will make the, the biggest difference for you it, in, in clearing your head? Is there anything specifically that, that you'll look to do um, this coming season or anything that will make that biggest difference as far as not having more of a repeat of, of some of the struggles of last season? Yeah, I think uh, some things that I pounded in my head this off season and, and keep writing down in my daily journal is, is to control what I can control. Um, you know, not worrying about previous outings or, or what's to come or, you know, inning five when I'm just now towing the rubber or pitch 40 whenever I'm throwing pitch five. You know, I think that has a lot to do with, with how I can control the game as well as control my emotions. Uh, you know, Larry does an awesome job with us younger pitchers of explaining to us how important it is to execute the pitch that's in front of you um, and not getting ahead of yourself. You know, this game is like I said earlier, it's very, very difficult. It's very challenging. Don't let it speed up on you. You know, control, control your emotions, control one pitch at a time, um, and good things are going to happen. Thanks, Chris. Chris, appreciate it. Thank you. Go to Marty. Hi, Chris. This is a strange question, kind of based on the, the B-roll footage that we've had access to. But did you, did you bulk up this off season? It looks like you got a little bit bigger in the off season. I did. Um, you know, I've always struggled putting on a little bit of weight. Um, you know, I've always been that tall drink of water, that saying they say. But, uh, you know, I, I really focused on my nutrition this off season, um, And like I said, having, having a, a season that I wasn't very pleased with personally, um, you know, got me in the weight room. And I, I attacked a, a lot of different situations and getting my, making sure my body's ready to go for, for spring training as well as the season. So I put on, like I said, six to seven pounds of, of good muscle this off season. How did you do that? Like, what's 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 the what's the secret for your nutrition? To be honest with you, um, I bought some land out in uh, <laughs> Texas, about twenty five acres. I have like a little little cabin that I'm staying in, and thirty minutes is the nearest grocery store. So I had yeah. you know once every two weeks I went to the grocery store and, and stocked up, and I cooked every night. And I think that, that had a lot to do with um, being disciplined, knowing that I can't drive over to Waterburger. And, uh, you know, get a double meat cheeseburger. I had to, you know, stay disciplined with, with eating my chicken or broccoli or fish, whatever it was that night. 
And last thing, and I, and I think you kind of alluded to this when to Bob Scanlon, but how did you deal with the mental? I mean, you had the high and the low. You were the opening day starter, which was a goal of yours, and then you didn't get a chance to pitch against the Dodgers in the postseason. How did you how did you deal with that internally uh, this offseason? Yeah, it was you know it was challenging. Like I said, there was a there was it was a huge learning curve for me. Um, but at the end of the day, you know. I know everyone's asking about, you know, why I didn't pitch against the Dodgers series. It wasn't that. You know, we, we were hoping that we were going to get to game four, game five against those guys, and I was just, you know, I was ready to go for game four. Um, but, you know, overall, the, the opening day start, as well as, as not pitching in playoffs, it's not a big factor. You know, I know that this, at the end of the day, this team wants to win, and we're all going to contribute some way or another. And, you know, my biggest goal is to make sure that I can just be a good teammate and control what I can control. And with the group of guys we got now, um, you know, I know Turner on the Dodgers side hit it on it um, a couple days ago, but we got 18 or 19 games in the regular season of, of playoff baseball. So it's going to be pretty fun against those guys. Thank you. Good. Uh, AJ? Hi, Chris. Good to see you. How you doing? You growing out the hair, I see. I am, yeah, a little bit of a mad <laughs> one. Um, what uh, what did you pinpoint as the uh, exact reason for the the drop off in the fastball last season from what it was in 2019 and and what it did spin wise in 2019? Yeah, I think uh, you know talking pitching here, it's uh, you know being a taller pitcher on the mound. I my biggest success rate is whenever I'm north to south. You know. I, last year I was east to west. You know I was I was pulling off. Um, you know my spin direction was outside of one. For the for y'all that know you know the baseball term of that, the axis of the baseball was. I was just I was getting two seam run on my four seam fastball. Um, and you know at the big league level, the longer they see it in the zone, you know the harder they're going to hit it. So to answer your question, I would say the biggest thing that I fixed was broke down a lot of video in 2019 as well as uh, you know 2018 and in, in the minor leagues of, of really breaking down some of my mechanics on my front side um, you know keeping basically the term I use is staying grounded as long as I can um, with my legs and letting my upper body you know pinpoint the strong strong direction um, to whoever it is that I'm throwing to that day so if, if your fastball, if you kind of make those adjustments and if it can be what you think it can be, given the, the other work you're doing on your other pitches, where do you think that will will take your game? Yeah, I also believe that, you know, messing around with a cutter uh, towards the last season, um, you know, showing that late, I think honestly helped get my fastball back. Um, you know, because when you throw a cut fastball, you have to kind of be on the outside of it and you have to really stay behind it. Um, so I think that that really had a – a big impact on getting my four seam spin back in the direction that we want to go. Um, but like I said, I, I was I was amazed and blown away with with the uh, analytical side of things on the difference between my 2019 and my 2020 fastball. It blew my mind, um, and that's when I really started to sit down and respect, you know, that these numbers aren't just you know thrown on a computer or written down. They're you know they're set in stone, and they're you know some guys use them, some guys don't. But I think I'm I'm learning more on the on the side of I'm gonna you know run with those numbers and being able to break down those things during the season to see where I'm at. Got time for a couple more. We'll go to Dennis. Hey Chris, glad to hear your family's doing okay out in Texas. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, um, I was wondering. Uh, a couple of your teammates have spoken. Your rotation mates have spoken on just uh, not only the. the going from 160 to 162, but also having to worry about hitting again. And I was wondering where you came down on that side of the equation, whether uh, you like that or not. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm not opposed to it. Um, you know, last year we got to uh, experience the DH in the National League, um, you know, for the first time as well as around the entire league. But I think um, there's some pros and there's some cons. You know, as uh, being a pitcher, I think last year I really liked and really enjoyed just focusing on pitching, you know, not worried about, um, you know, and my three or four hitters later, you know, my after, whoever, um, just focusing on pitching. But at the end of the day, 
you know, it, it's set in stone that, you know, pitchers are going to hit and we got to do our job at the plate to uh, help our team win. And I think, you know, from a, from a staff standpoint, speaking for the other guys, is easily you can help yourself win three or four games by, you know, executing your bunts or, or uh, coming up big in situations throughout the game, as well as, you know, if we want to go six, seven, eight innings deep in the game, we're going to have to do our job at the plate. And separately, I'm wondering, um, you mentioned Mason Thompson, who I believe you've known for a few years and now training with him uh, this offseason. What have you seen from him, and what do you expect as him possibly being a part of the bullpen this year? Yeah, it's uh, it's been cool to see his his progress, man. And, and you know, we were high school, uh, not teammates, but we were high school friends and, and played against each other growing up. So I think it's pretty cool to see a young guy like himself, um, you know, go through the minor leagues and now I believe this is his first big league camp. And, we work out together at True Grind Systems in Austin, Texas in the off season. So it's been awesome to see, you know, how much he's matured and, and how hungry it is to how hungry he is to get out there and uh, you know, throw his ninety eight to hundred mile an hour fastball and he's uh, he's a big dude, man. I'm I'm happy for him. Go to Jeff. Hey Chris, I had two questions for you. Um, confidence in your curveball, where is that and where do you see that progressing this year? Um you know, the way I, I like to explain it now is is confidence on all my pitches is there. And I, I, I think I've lacked that over the past couple of years of, of really trusting those pitches. Um, going back to the ana analytical side of things, I think I threw my fast or my curveball four or five percent of the time last season. You know, at the big league level, you know, that's not going to cut it. Um, especially being a starter nowadays, you, you got you to gotta be able to show three or four pitches um, to have some success. And... You know, I think the curveball, like I said, I'm pretty hard on myself, but I'm, I'm really liking the shape. Uh, I'm really liking the velo where it's coming out so far. Um, throwing some bullpens in spring and, and had my first live a couple days ago. So being able to get some feedback from our hitters um, as well as, as our coaches, I think is, is going to be really good for me going into spring. I wanted to ask you about Austin Nola. Uh, what struck you about the way he came over last year, learned the staff? You know, yeah. What was your impression of him? Yeah, it's uh, he's an awesome, dude, man. Even better teammate. Um, you know, I feel like catchers in this game don't get enough credit on how challenging it is to catch, you know, eighteen different pitchers in a course of a couple of days and and get to know every single one of us and how we pitch and you know how to how to communicate on the mound and how to game call and all those things and and uh, you know we're very honored to have him. And I think he's going to be a big part of our success this year at the plate as well as behind the plate. Um, you know, he, he contributes a lot to this game. And, you know, we, we all love throwing to him. And, uh, but I would say catchers, man, they don't get enough credit when it comes to uh, even in spring, how much, how, how, how long they're out there catching, you know, eight, eight nine, ten different guys every day, um, trying to learn them as best as they can. How um, how did he go about trying to learn you guys on the fly last year? I mean, he gets traded over, you know, end of August. And you guys, I think, threw a handful of shutouts after he showed up. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you bringing up that, I think the first three or four games that he caught, you know, we had shutout baseball. And uh, that was pretty cool to see, you know, from from uh, getting a new guy from the Mariners and, uh, you know, being, being, being able to call him a teammate and him coming over and, and calling three or four shutouts was was a pretty special moment. But um, I think what's what's pretty cool about Nola is is he uh, you know sat down with us individually and and went over a couple things. And he's just one of those guys that wants to know what we're thinking. You know, he wants us to be honest with him. And I think that that, that has a lot to do with with his success as well as our our starting staff. Great, thanks, man. Thank you. And we'll finish up with Adam. Hey, Chris, just want to echo um, all the thoughts. Really glad to hear your family's doing well in Texas. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, just want to ask you, there's obviously been a lot of discussion about going from 60 games to 162, as Dennis had mentioned, and pitcher workloads. And with you specifically, obviously, uh, with the surgery, you had the, the innings limit, and then you thought you'd be going full four. Just curious if you've had any conversations with the staff about what your workload will be this year and going from 60 to 162 and kind of how you're preparing for that. Yeah, we haven't uh, talked to it, you know, talked about it, um, you know, attacking the season on how we're going to do that. But, um, 
like I said, I'm, I'm just going to make sure that I'm ready to go. Um, I know it is there's going to be some, some challenges this year going from 60 to 162. And, you know, our goal is to play more than 162, so even more than that. Um, but, you know, like we said at last spring is, you know, to win a championship, it, it's going to take all, you know, it's not just going to be 26 of us. It's going to take all, all of us in this clubhouse right now in spring training to uh, contribute and, and to give back to this team to get where we want to go. And, um, you know, I know it sucks to say injuries are going to happen, uh, but we're trying to do everything we can right now to prepare to make sure that we're ready to go for the season. And, uh, you know, the guys behind us, um, you know, they, they got our back. So I think it's, it's going to be cool to see, see where, we, where we lay out and where we finish the season. But 60 to 162, man, it's, uh, it's going to be challenging.